Good evening everyone. Here we are at Mashobra, just outside the beautiful residence of Mr. D. C. Anand. Same. Proud to be here, Cousin House. Huh? Cousin House. Oh, Cousin House. Yes. Sir. Opposition. That's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and how old are you? I'm 11, sir. Well done, well done. And you? Say Ibitsen. Ibitsen. Ibitsen, okay. Also, a good house, my neighbor. <laughs> Where have you come from? Sir, I'm from Assam. Oh, okay, very far. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. And you are from where? I'm from Bashinda, sir. Bashinda, Okay. Good, good. Good, Come, sit down, guys. Good evening, everyone. We are here with Mr. D.C. Anand, who is an alumni of BCS and also a businessman. Nice to meet you, sir. Okay. And thank you for having us here. I'm delighted to have you. Thank you. We are here to interview Mr. D.C. Anand on his life at BCS and what made him so successful. So, what does BCS mean to you? Well, first of all, it taught me to be honest. Don't tell lies. Also, it taught me that you must be very healthy so you can protect yourself and protect others. Not too much fat here. <laughs> it taught me, like... Uh, the housemaster used to come in the mornings and inspect my hands and see the, my nails and see how clean they were. And you did that, and thank you, sir. He would look at uh, my hair. Oh, better go and see the barber. Next morning came back. Oh, he said, oh, you went to the barber? Yes, sir. Go back again. <laughs> so off I went. Again, the next day, same story repeats. You went to the barber? Yes, sir. Go back again. So he said to me, this is the last time. If you don't have your hair cut properly, I am coming with you. So I pretty well went back and my hair chopped. So he says, that's much better. Well, uh, that shows a sense of discipline. Mm -hmm. And that uh, you must look clean and tidy when you go out in the world. And also at home. You can be neat and tidy. Don't trouble your mother too much. Mm -hmm. Have all the clothes lying about. <laughs> <laughs> There's no matron there to pick them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a sense of discipline. That's uh, you learn. I learned discipline. Hands behind your back. Hands not in your pocket. Mm -hmm. The ladies in the world. That's an issue that we have in our country. We take them for granted. We don't show the same amount of respect as we ought to do to the ladies. So I was, uh, when I went out of the world, quite successful because I respected them. And I also loved them. So the best thing that happened was that I got a lovely lady to marry me. <laughs> so, life was uh, a good learning for me at BCS. There, sir, you joined BCS at the age of 14. Yeah. What made your parents choose BCS as your school? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> I was uh, in a primary school in Lahore before the partition, which was uh, not a, an English-speaking uh, school. They felt that English was uh, 
national language mm-hmm. for the country and for the world. And they thought that BCS would be a good discipline for me. Mm-hmm. It had a good reputation. It had English uh, students mm-hmm. at that time and English uh, teachers. So I, I think that was the reason for uh, joining BCS. Mm-hmm. Uh, the freedom movement was at its peak when you just moved into Shimla. So yeah. what are your like memories from that time that you still remember? Well, uh, the first one was that uh, the Muslim boys decided and uh, I think the government also played a part in it mm-hmm. that uh, overnight they were hauled into two trucks mm-hmm. and one of the very illustrious students was Humayun Khan mm-hmm. who went from there to join Cambridge and from there uh, he joined the foreign service in Pakistan mm-hmm. and then he when he finished studies at Cambridge he joined after foreign service to become an ambassador and fortunately for us he became an ambassador to India can you believe that (laughs) very interesting I'm so sorry to say that last year he passed away I remember of him as a very unusual uh, student both uh, in class and also in the play fields. And every time he walked by the dining room, thum, 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 silence, <laughs> thum, 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 not a whisper. It was a uh, little frightening, but he established his authority. So not anybody going to question him. How did your time at BCS shape you? Well, some of these attributes of discipline and at the end of it all, it's the courage. Mm. And uh, in our days, you had to get punished and there used to be a stick. (laughs) You could only get six, but you could also get two. But if you said, no, thank you, you got one more. So if you get six and say, thank you, and you said, okay, well done, go. <laughs> so it, it taught you also to take punishment. Mm-hmm. You take punishment and you still laugh and say, thank you. And you go out rubbing your backside. <laughs> <laughs> the, in the showers, people are looking at it, counting it, you know, all the boys are looking at it. <laughs> How many lashes you got. Were the housemasters strict during that time? Well, uh, I can't speak for all of them, but I have some idea of some of them. But our housemaster was with Marsh Knight. And he was a very notorious uh, boy from BCS, then he joined the army, mm-hmm. and from the army, from Assam actually. <laughs> he came back during the war uh, to BCS to teach. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was not strict, but he was very fair. We were afraid of him. But we were also fond of him. Mm. He was a good sportsman mm. and an English teacher. So just about any and everything, uh, he excelled. Mm-hmm. I particularly noticed how well he dressed. He had a very good sense of dressing. And he had a uh, suit for every occasion mm-hmm. and for sports. In the evening after a bath, he had a 
polo neck sweater and uh, nice uh, coat on top of it when he walked around the school then would come to the dormitories not just revolved dormitories but go to all the other dormitories and he endeared himself to most of us so we were not really afraid of him when he left bcs he joined a school in the bahamas mm-hmm. and from there he came back and joined a school in england and uh, i went to see him with another friend of mine in the south of england where he was teaching he had developed some problem with his neck so he was happy to see us and he looked quite sad that he was not in india mm-hmm. once you come here get used to the people get mm-hmm. used to nice climate hot and cold uh, rain and sometimes good sunshine and uh, england is not a, a good uh, place from the climate and one of the reasons people came uh, to india from england was to be posted in shimla mm-hmm. shimla was also then the summer, summer. capital yes so in that sense he and many of the others were lucky to be here and it's very interesting that after seeing him there uh, when i was leaving he made a very special gesture he put his hand into his pocket mm. and took out a pen and he said dc you gave me this pen as my parting from the school that was 25 years ago he had saved that pen now that tells you something about caring mm. you know that he must have been fond of me i must have been fond of him mm. and he remembered that so these little gestures you do in life for somebody else they accept them and they respect them so that was a joyous moment for me and my association doesn't end there it is very unusual that i happened to be in england when i got information that he had passed away and we went for the funeral there must have been 50 of us so you had really interesting batchmates and seniors during your time one of them being ruskin born we yes. interviewed him a few days ago yes wonderful do, do you have any memories of him well i know he was a uh, goalkeeper for the school mm-hmm. he played well my memory he was in bitson who was in bitson he you mm-hmm. yeah it was a neck dormitory to our dormitory and i think he became a house captain also okay. yes my best memory of him would have to be that he was fairly shy in those days not as well known as he is today mm-hmm. and uh, during that period he became a bit of a recluse and uh, i think that carried him in the early part of his life mm-hmm. and from there onward when he came back to india i think he retained that position mm-hmm. and that status interestingly when uh, he left bcs he came uh, to england he was in the same class as i was in the school so i would occasionally get to see him in london when i joined my apprenticeship with westinghouse 
he was still in London, not uh, well employed. However, the company asked me to write my experiences of being in England. I was not an author, I was not a writer. But I found a way. Again, it taught me another lesson, that if you have somebody who knows you something better than you, you better go and depend on him or her. So I called Ruskin. I said, Ruskin, I have this story that they want me to write. I will pen it, and can you correct it for me? He said, oh, sure, send it to me. So I sent him whatever I wrote, and he put it down in a book form and sent it to me. And then I sent it to the headmaster equivalent in Westinghouse. They employed four or five hundred people, and it went to circulation for all of them. And uh, obviously, after that, they thought I was a genius. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is to know what to do and how to approach a problem. And before it becomes a real problem, find a solution to it. For me, this was a saving grace. Mm -hmm. And it, it was wonderful. And I have off, often kept in touch with him. He has not been moving out of where he is. Maybe he doesn't need to. And also maybe you don't have the time, you know, when you're an author, you're a writer, you can't have intrusion. So he doesn't move about very much. But uh, he's been very successful, which is uh, something that we are very proud of. Sir, do you remember the Kirshner brothers? Yeah. yeah. First of all, they were Ravazites. <laughs> and Kirshner one was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And in the same class, and so was Kirshner two. Mm -hmm. They were uh, German boys and uh, very much disciplined, mm -hmm. interestingly, by their mother. And they ran a Coventer's Dairy, which is uh, on the way to Simla. There is uh, Tar Dairy, Tara Devi. There was a Coventer's Dairy, which has not been converted into a workshop by the government. And their father ran that. And uh, quite often from BCS, we trek to Coventer's Dairy from, from the back to go and visit them for some milk and cream. And apart from that, Kirshner I was an absolute genius. He was first in every subject. A reasonable sportsman, but more importantly, very much academically acclaimed. He was upright, tall, and uh, a great swimmer, great swimmer. In three, four, five strokes, he's on the other end. And uh, we all looked up to him because he was very good in swimming. But I do believe that he was, uh, apart from being disciplinary, there was some human side. But because they had suffered during the Second World War, and because they were Germans, they were obviously hunted. When they arrived into India, they found some respite because all Assam, further down, was dominated uh, by the German army. Mm -hmm. So Kirshner too, on the other hand, interestingly, looked up to his brother. There was a Krishna 1, there was a Krishna 2. Krishna 2 was very humane. He was uh, very generous with his heart, very caring. 
and because we were in the same dormitory and because you we were in the same class because i was very weak on all the subjects i would go to kushner to help me mm. and uh, he would lend me his books 20 year 20 years later when i started my industry in nasik and then in pune i heard that he had left his assignment that he had with one other uh, aircraft companies in in america so i reached out to him and i said if you are currently not too busy why don't you come and see me in india and let me see if i can offer you something so he came here i offered him a job in pune hmm. so he stayed with me for 3 years as a consultant and uh, our friendship continued till 6 8 months ago when he passed away when i was a uh, sixth form for our coming up for our exams mm-hmm. we used to have uh, i think 10 days of vacation sometimes in september october mm-hmm. you probably still do i don't know yes yes we do and uh, i didn't like to be bound in the school because there was a ruling that you were not allowed to go there was a quarantine yes yes so to speak and i decided to talk to two of my uh, colleagues both of them revazites vyas nikay who became the master general of police in chandigarh big fellow sadar ji 6 footer 5 inches and another not so illustrious in his physical attributes it was a uh, man or a gentleman called ganesh vera who came from a very wealthy family and i said to both of them let's go out into town and have some ice cream at qualities he said oh no no we are quarantined i said come on boys let's go let's go anyway we bunked is there such a thing as bunking abhi bhi hota hai yeah uh not moving out of school but just missing classes and uh, okay anyway we bunked out of school and uh, it was must have been at 6 o'clock in the evening and we had our ice cream we came back in time for dinner as the we were just walking around the school didn't make out as to that we had gone off to the mall to have ice cream so it was uh, an interesting experience and coming back to uh, having a stick or two at your back side in the physics class Mr Fisher who was the headmaster also the physics uh, tutor said to me anand stand up i stood up and uh, he said uh, mera who was the other fellow also in my class stand up he also stood up nakai was not in my class he was one our junior i think so he said to me where were you at part 5 i said sir at 5 minutes past 5 i think i was on the ball oh you were on the ball at 5 and it's past 5 you know you're not supposed to have left the school what to do sir we want to have ice cream and it was a nice evening we decided to break the rule 
ओके आई नो वॉट आई विल डू इन द इवनिंग एट फाइव ओ क्लॉक देर बी टू कार्स वेटिंग टू टेक यू होम ओ माई गॉड वी आर रेडिंग आर सेल्व ऑल थ्री ऑफ आर सर आर एस सी एग्जाम्स एज दे आर नोन गॉड एंड टू एट द स्कूल केम आउट टू सी मी ऑफ एंड सी न काय एंड मिस्टर मेरा ऑफ the we are going down they sent one mr parker who was the person at that time an englishman to accomplish me and nakai mera in the train from kolkata to delhi and deposit them with our parents because uh, parker told us you are not coming back in the train we are in the same compartment hmm. and i i said sir we got exams but don't worry about it because you won't have to worry about it hmm. you will not be allowed to sit well we'll we'll talk to your father but i turned around to the other two to the guy to mera and i said this is not going to happen because it's not such a serious offense and it is just that they are upset and uh, fisher made it quite clear who was the master and physics teacher mm-hmm. and said to me i'm sure anand you led these other people who are they i said i can't remember mera was in the class mera were you there with him yes sir oh do you see do you remember i said yes i remember <laughs> so i still kept quiet about the guy how was the school saw us down in cheering and when in the train i said to to the boys to the other two colleagues I said uh, don't worry they won't keep us in delhi for too long and uh, we'll be back in the school for our exams we came back to the school all three again intact you came back to school as a governor what made you come back to bcs after a long time well uh, there's another uh, difficult question to answer i tried to come back to try and make sure that uh, the methods that the previous masters and the headmaster had were not being uh, followed an interesting episode uh, in my class at that time the headmaster was the reverend drake and i think he used to take divinity or something like that he climbed up on the desk in the last week of our school leaving and he put his hand out mark my word within one month we will be back we were stunned what he was talking about and anyway i took no notice of it what was saying that this independence is not going to last and that the english are going to come back and to run and rule hmm. and many indians welcomed that thought hmm. in fact very funny that i was only thinking this morning when i knew you 
in the back of coming, that I'm quite fond of Winston Churchill, that in one of his books, there is a sentence there that he says, India is not a country. It is just a territory of people. And what bothers me is that he had been in India two, three times as a cadet. And he was in Bangalore and he played polo here. And he stayed there and that he is a very, very intelligent man. Why he had to make that statement and why did he believe that uh, India will never be India, that it would be remain a territory? However, as it may weigh, be, but that was his view. But it made me uh, this morning even think of him. Because uh, I have always thought of him in great enlightenment, which he was, with an admirable prime minister. And he also made another statement that he would uh, not uh, live on the dismemberment of the British Empire, where India was the jewel in the crown. Again, he proved wrong. So some of your judgments, even as a Prime Minister, can be wrong. Mm -hmm. So your question was, why I came back to school? Well, some of those memories, good and bad, made me think that school should be governed mm -hmm. and run in a disciplinarian fashion and not go into disarray. At the, about the same time, Fisher, as the headmaster, was asked to lead by the Board of Governors and the Chairman. I won't go into why. And they selected another gentleman, Freddie Brown, as a temporary headmaster, but he was not qualified, which the university required. So he also stayed there for a year or two. And then they started to look for a headmaster from the outside, the Board of Governors. The chairman being uh, the Bishop of Amritsar. So anyway, uh, they decided to look for a, another headmaster. And I think they got a scenarian who came here. I forget his name now. And at about that time, I had also moved uh, back from England to Bombay to get a job. And then start my own business. I would come to Simla occasionally for a vacation because I have a home in Simla, in Kizar Cottage, not this house, but another home mm -hmm. where I was born, actually. So, I used to try to go to school, try to uh, get the old boys get together under the old Cotonians banner, which was already there, mm -hmm. but it had lost its glamour. Mm -hmm. And when I was in London, I used to attend their meet. Mm -hmm. So I got some of the boys, Cotonians, and said, come on, let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no room on the board of governors mm -hmm. for the Cotonian. So, over a period, I can't go into all the details, but we managed to convince the board and the chairman, sort of agreed that we come in one Cotonian, then it began two Cotonians as board of governors. So, we brought in Mustafi. Uh, is it true during your time, uh, sports outranked studies? I mean, was sports person considered like gods? 
they are pretty well ran parallel. This is an outstanding uh, boxer who box for Punjab and uh, Gay Niblet was one of the governors, again one year senior to me or two years senior to me. I helped to bring him on the board. So we brought fair amount of influence by the Cotonians, old Cotonians. I don't know how it stands in terms of sport, but BC has put huge emphasis on sport. Mm -hmm. All the sport, whether it's boxing, cricket, mm -hmm. hockey, and also on uh, debates. Mm -hmm. And I have attended one or two, mm -hmm. and I think the boys are pretty good. So I would not say one ahead of the other. Now the parents to put too much pressure on the children for academics. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily agree that's the answer. Maybe because I was not very good at academics. When somebody asked uh, Winston Churchill, how come you've done so well? You went to Harrow, which is one of the famous mm -hmm. British schools. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I went to Harrow but I went under Harrow. <laughs> <laughs> so he quite acknowledged that he was not brilliant. That uh, has often intrigued me. How this gentleman so cleverly writes his four volumes on Churchill and how he also was the Prime Minister of Britain for so many uh, years. Quite a unique individual. Automotive was a part of the genes that my father was in this line of business before the, the war, and they used to import cars from America. Mm -hmm. However, he was not into manufacturing. But when, after the independence, there was an opportunity to develop it further. I was at the right place at the right time. There is always a, such a thing. Hmm. And I came back from England after a, half an engineer. I joined Mahindra to make the jeep. I set up their jeep factory in Bombay. Oh. So they encouraged me to go to America and learn something more about machines. I came back. I worked with them for four or five years. And then Rain became a plant manager. And after that, uh, I decided that this is as far as I'm going to get. So I went to see Mr. Mahindra. And I said, oh, sir, I have decided to leave and start a business. He said, you better resign, otherwise I'll fire you. So I, I resigned. And he gave me a good recommendation to the, some of the partners in America. So influence was, uh, if I may take the liberty of saying, my character hmm. rather than anything else. School must have helped to develop a character. So it is not because of because, but it's a because of because. Uh. So as we know, you worked with Mahindras and now your company has also so sold parts, various parts to Tata Group. So how do you define your relationship with these two groups? No, we have a fantastic relationship with Tata Group. If you see, have you seen my book? Uh, yes. I think Mr. Tata has something to say about me. Have you read it? Uh, no, I have not read it. Like You would how? Read it loud. Deep Anand has been one of the pioneers of the automobile component industry in India. 
and these companies have grown with style and panache. I admire him for the enterprises he has built and the manner in which he has managed them. Ratan and Tata. That tells you everything. <laughs> uh, it's a very good relationship both with Tata and Mahindra's and with the 10 other companies, motorcycles, scooters, railways. So it's uh, what kind of a team you build. Now, from there, I've learned team building. So the company that I have built, which has helped me to build my businesses, is a team player. So now I employ 15,000 people. Mm. So you have to make sure that there's a team player. I quite work out that we have 50 factories all over India. Mm -hmm. So this team that works. Now I retired a few years ago and my daughter who's uh, 44, she is the boss. And uh, I'm what is called a mentor. Mm -hmm. So I don't run the business anymore. I perhaps influence the business. And he's not now working for Mr. Mahindra or Mr. Tata, supplying them components and getting their patronage. Mm -hmm. so and the business is now $2 billion a year. That's a big number. Yes, that's a big number. Were you interested into business from the very start or did it only occur to you once you got into these big companies at that time? No, it had occurred to me uh, watching my father. Hmm. Hmm. He, he had started a business which was contracting. <clears throat> Your father is a contractor. Yes. Your father is a contractor. I didn't like the contracting business that my father was doing. I wanted to be a manufacturer. Mm. However, I liked my father's lifestyle. He had a house in Simla, he had a nice home in Delhi, mm. Mm. and he had decided that it was a good life to come here in the summer and the winter to be in Delhi. And I thought, well, he enjoyed the good things of life, I've inherited a few things, maybe these carpets come from him, or the sofas come from him, and so uh, he liked the good things of life. Mm. And I said, well, it's, a, it's a good way to live, you know, if you're a businessman. Mm. So that's when I said to Mr. Mahindra that, he said, what do you want? I said, I want your job, sir. So he said, oh, that's the door, my boy. <laughs> So that's that story of parting. Mm. Having said that, a month ago, when Mr. Mahindra passed away, I was there at his funeral in Bombay. Mm. So interestingly, for 65 years, I've had this relationship with him. Mm. We can go to his house and have tea with him or have a whiskey with him. And we've had a very enjoyable relationship. So Never break trust. Have a good relationship with people who have been your partners. So coming to your lifestyle, mm. how has your life been after retirement? That's a very, very deep question. <laughs> well, it's a little more relaxed. But I can't say that uh, I enjoy it. I always knew that uh, there is such a thing as end and that I have responsibility for these 15,000 people mm -hmm. plus another 50,000 shareholders mm -hmm. that I must have a, somebody who is going to take over from me and then fortunately it's my daughter. I won't go into her accomplishments but anyway. I don't spend much time on that, but I think, again, I am interested in reading. I used to be playing golf till last uh, six months ago, then I had a little problem with my leg. 
Simon plays very good golf, your director. Before that, I was into horse riding. I used to bring my horses here, kept my horses in Delhi and in Bombay. Mm -hmm. And my daughter now, and my son-in-law, they both are into horses. He with polo and she with dress, dressage. I read three papers in the morning, newspapers, know what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm quite involved with the world politics. I watch the news at night on BBC and uh, see what's happening in the rest of the world. And fortunately, I say that we are lucky, and you even more lucky, because the rest of the world is having difficulty in coping with the modern developments. Mm -hmm. The rest of the world, India is doing exceedingly well, Recession. is my book. And it will continue to do so as long as uh, we have good schooling for the children. Mm. And today's uh, economic times, I see one of the girls has won top scholarship in some entrance exams. I think she is from one of the schools in Simla. So education is a high priority to be able to leapfrog the difficulties that the so-called advanced countries have. Mm -hmm. At one time, America was a lead country. Mm -hmm. Russia was their competitor. Now both of them are in disarray. America with its own population, Russia with its own problem. Mm -hmm. So who's the leader of the world? It could well be Mr. Modi, really, and that's the way it's going. Mm -hmm. So, you gentlemen, when you are in your, what, 20s, you, you are what, about 14, 15? 17. Okay, you're 17, and you? 15. Yeah, okay, I thought so. That uh, you will... Uh, when you are, let's say, 30, India will be the, the most powerful economic power. With the rate GDP is growing, India is definitely going to be in yeah. one of those top yeah. brackets. Well, economically, it's already now in the first, second place. But I think we will be ahead of Japan also. Mm -hmm. But then you have some competition from Korea and some other countries. But look at what has happened to South America, Argentina, Brazil. All underdeveloped now. At one time they were better than us. We mm -hmm. are now several times better than them. So I think that's... Uh, the future and for you guys is good. And I can see you as a very upright young man. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 11, sir. 11 also. You are 11 and you're 14? 15. 15 and he's 17. 17. What do you want to say about the dropout trend that is going on these years? Like people are dropping out of colleges. They are following examples of Ambani's. Well, they can follow the Ambani's. But in my view, that uh, that is not easily doable. They can have an ambition, but do they have the training? Do they have the education? So education is necessary. Mm -hmm. Education is necessary. And to succeed in what these boys want, vision is also necessary, if they have a vision. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to be in the auto parts business. You must know, I don't want to make a car or a tractor. I never wanted to because you are competing with my customer. Mm -hmm. What good is that? I'm a supplier to everybody, Tata's, Mahindra, Sonalika, and whatever else, Massey Ferguson, Escorts, etc., etc., etc. 
So vision is very essential for these youngsters who want to go out in the world and do things on their own. Dream big. Build a team also. But for the team you have also to pay for their salaries and also for their upkeep. So how do you get a good team uh, who share the same vision as you? Uh, well, it's a culture to build a team. You have a culture that you put in place. Mm-hmm. And you look at being a fair player. So it comes, it, it comes. Yeah, because, you know, instead of the embodies, uh, rather we uh, follow the example of Tata's mm-hmm. and Dirla's maybe, or Mahindra's, you know. So some are more upright, and some are not. Ambani put in that category of not being upright. So you guys, uh, the Anand Group, opened up this CNS Foundation for Charity. CNS. Uh, uh, SNS. SNS Foundation uh, for Charity. Well, uh, do you think, uh, I mean, what made you uh, start, start charity the charity, charity? Charity Foundation. I think it's uh, an obligation to the country in which we live that has made me successful. Mm-hmm. And there's so much poverty here. Mm-hmm. See what needs to be done. And I have now offered the school a few scholarships. Mm-hmm. So in order to help the poor mm-hmm. or the underprivileged, that is the aim. And also, what to do with my money. I have uh, five homes Mm -hmm. that my wife has to look after. One in London, one in Bombay, two in Delhi, one or two in Shimla. What more do you want? I only want to live in this country. With the motto of Anand Group being uh, power of partnership, uh, when did you realize that you were good at per- uh, persuasion, negotiation, and uh, closing of the deal? <laughs> I never realized. Though, though my father did say that to some people, I without realizing it, I just carried on doing what I was enjoying. I used to go to America twice a year, go to Japan twice a year, go out to California, <coughs> go off to Brazil, and go to Japan. You know, just, we, we traveled a lot, we lived in America, we lived in England for many years. So, it gave me a great joy to travel. I was young, I was 27 when I started around all this. I had married a very young woman. She was 16 year old, Sazarni. She was a tough one to pack and unpack. Somebody asked her what to do, she says, I pack and unpack. <laughs> In all the hotels in different parts of the world. So, I didn't plan. Your question was very appropriate. When did I decide this model? I decided this model is very difficult to explain. It's quite long-winded. We will be here for a long time. The model itself tells you that I could get (coughs) technology from overseas which India doesn't have. It is not developing, but we are still at a municipal state, very municipal. So I realized that if I wanted to get ahead in life and have the same kind of style that my father had in the 20s or 30s or earlier, then I had to find a mechanism 
And this looked like a good mechanism because I felt the foreigners do not know as well as I do in starting a business here hmm. or in managing a business here. So my expertise I gave to the foreign company hmm. and they gave their expertise to me. Most of my companies has foreign enterprise and that technology comes from the foreign companies. Okay. The future lies in good education and a good institution and BCS is the best of all. Hmm. 